question is, with the growing crop of WWE talent now, do you see anybody that's really growing into the next John Cena of WWE? Oh, if they were, I would tell them stop. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, I, this is some, some real inside baseball. Anyone who's here for WWE is going to love this answer, but I'll keep it short. I think the dynamic of the program is changing. For the longest time, I think if you consider WWE a band, there's been one front person of the band. I think that dynamic is changing, and it's because the audience is too diverse. I think older males are watching it, younger kids are watching it, females are watching it. The audience is so diverse, so with a diverse audience, it's tough to universally please someone. In the 80s, you had a family-oriented program and Hulk Hogan was the front man. In the 90s, you had 18 to 35-year-old males, in comes Steve Austin and Dwayne Johnson because they hit right down that wheelhouse. And then there was me, but even myself, as you know, went through a polarizing stage where half the audience likes you and half the audience doesn't. So I don't think there's a universal figure that will lead the company forward. I think as the company grows and especially expands globally, you're going to have like a super friends of the WWE, which is like people who are essentially fighting for equal share of popularity. I think the the band essentially will now have 10 lead singers of every different race, creed, color, sex, ethnic ethnicity. So I, w I believe that I was kind of the last of, of that. And I think the, the landscape has changed so much that it's more of a group effort rather than an individual effort. Amazing. Thank you. And that was Inside Baseball for WWE by John Cena. What's your favorite wrestling match that you like to look back on and watch over again? Uh, Hulk Andre, WrestleMania 3. Because to me it meant everything as a kid, or I, I thought it was an unwinnable task for Hulk Hogan, and the fact that he could defeat such a monumental, uh, impressive opponent. As a young child, that had a, a very lasting impression on me. Um, I just wanted to know, did you ever find um, middle school hard? Oh, every day. <laughs> every day. Uh, Middle school was especially tough for a bunch of reasons. I looked different than everybody else. I came from a small town in the North Shore of Massachusetts where everybody listened to rock and roll music and wore blue jeans. And this was at the advent of rap music, which is now referred to as hip hop music. And there were artists in the late 80s that wore these crazy pants that the crotch was like here. <laughs> and they wore these crazy polka dot shirts and they had these the crazy hairdos, and I was one of the people who enjoyed that type of music, and I loved the rebellious nature of that type of music, and I fell in love with it, and I began to, to look different than all the other students. So in middle school, every day, I got beat up for being myself. That was especially tough. <laughs> because I was going through a little bit of soul searching for myself, I also wasn't a really good student. I was a C minus student, if that, and I was really a problem in the classroom. And many times I had to be put in my place by my teachers and I'm grateful for every time they did it because it taught me an example of that I need to have a little bit of discipline in my life and behave. So I got beat up, I didn't enjoy class and I wasn't a good student, but I didn't change who I was. And over the course of time through middle school, people understood that I, it wasn't necessarily a phase. I was authentically being myself. And by the time I got out of middle school and into high school, my peer group and even those who weren't in my peer group appreciated me because I had taken a bunch of butt kickings and always gotten back up and never fought back. What I did instead is I asked my father at a very young age to buy me a, a weight set and I started working out as a self-defense measure and I found a passion of mine that I've kept for the past 30 years is lifting weights and becoming like trying to chase strength. So. If it wasn't for getting my butt kicked, and if it wasn't for having to check myself for being a bad student, and if it wasn't for all those hard days, I never would have found physical fitness. I never would have learned that you need to be yourself no matter what is put in front of you and always be proud of who you are. And over the time of just consistently staying true to my message, by the time I got to high school, everything had turned itself around. I became a successful athlete. I became a very successful student. I went from D, C minus to an A minus range. Uh, I was able to have a good support group around me, good mentorship, and ended up doing well and, and going on to excel in university. So if, if you're in middle school right now and you're having a tough time, you're not alone. 
is tough for everybody because essentially that's your transition from a kid to a young adult. So you're going through all these things and feelings and you don't know which way is up and every day is difficult. Just please know that you're not alone. Don't be afraid to ask anybody for help and never give up. Thank you. And so I, I write, so I was really curious when like, I heard that John Cena, the wrestling guy, wrote a book. So what was it like when you wrote like, that children's book? What now, was it like now when you say curious, where you're like, huh, John Cena, the wrestling guy, wrote a book, you're like, yeah. I'm a writer. John Cena, the wrestling guy, wrote a book? <laughs> Either way, it's totally cool. It's totally cool. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's awesome to be able to write, man. And um, a lot of the writing I do, I've been writing for a really long time. I wrote as a poet when I uh, made music for, to, for a rap album. I write all of the material that I present to an audience in WWE. That all comes from me. I write it all. Um, I love writing because it's a chance to create a narrative and a chance to create a universe and a chance to create a story. And I, I can only assume that that's probably why you enjoy writing as well. You get to use your imagination and put the information out there to the reader and the reader can't just read the text. The reader also has to participate and they have to use their imagination and they have to kind of help your words take on their own identity. So it's that magical ability for all of us to use something I think you should never lose, and that's your imagination, and that's why I love to do it so much. All right, thank you. You got it. <laughs>